Hey, all you zombie fans, welcome back to another great episode of The Survivalist. My name is Matt Jarbo, here today with Tony from Portland. Tony, how are you? Not too bad. How yourself today, Matt? Doing well. Thank you for being on the show. Now, you were just telling me you are a published zombie author. That is correct. Uh, my first novel, uh, Kings of the Dead, is published by Permuted Press. Uh, it's been out there for a little over a year uh, with them. Uh, before that, it was out for a year as a uh, self-published book. Uh, got enough attention that uh, Permuted came to me and said, hey, we'd like to offer you a uh, publishing contract. So I said, of course. And, uh, you know, I've also done some uh, self-publishing work myself. After that, I've got another book out there called Avery Nolan, Private Dick of the Dead. It's a, uh, an homage to the Pulp Fiction hard-boiled detective stories of the 50s and 60s. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely have links for those in the show notes so you guys listening at home can check it out. Uh, I, I recommend it, uh, especially the Private Dick of the Dead. I like that because um, I love those kind of stories, especially from the yeah, 1950s. Okay. But, but we'll get right into it here. So, Tony, I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. How would you survive a zombie outbreak? You, for me, I've uh, obviously I put a little bit of thought into the uh, zombie survival uh, and apocalypse. Uh, you know, I live here in Portland, Oregon, and Portland, Oregon is not the same that it used to be 20 years ago. Uh, 20 years ago, you'd, you'd drive around town and there'd be trucks every place with a you know, shotgun or hunting rifle in the back window or fishing rods and things along those lines. Uh, now all you find is BMWs and Audis and Mercedes and yuppies and their you know, uh, lattes and everything like that. Uh, well, I mean, the so, last time I was in Portland, there was a lot of Priuses everywhere. I'm pretty sure they're still there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're, they're everywhere, uh, pretty much in everybody's <laughs> way, but they're still here, you know. <laughs> uh, so the chances of surviving a zombie apocalypse here in Portland have, have reduced, in my opinion, over recent years. Uh, so I've had to step up my game uh, in order to uh, make sure that uh, even if nobody else is going to make it, uh, I'm going to have a pretty good shot at it. Uh, sure, in order sure. For me, yeah, you know, I've, I, I have uh, – I'm not – such a zombie fan that I am, you know, just absolutely, oh, yeah, zombies are coming. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. No, what's probably going to happen is we're going to have some social unrest. Things are going to, you know, the, the proverbial uh, crap's going to hit the fan. And, sure. you know, we're going we're gonna to have some problems. Uh, you know, but I have stocked up on food and water and firearms and ammunition and all that sort of stuff, uh, you know, just in case that, that stuff does happen. Uh, it just so happens that my favorite genre, you know, revolves around much of that and, and getting prepared. So for my wife and I, it comes down to we wouldn't even have to crack our front door for the first six months of a zombie outbreak. Uh, we've got more than enough food and water in the house to last us for six months. Um, I, I've got uh, more than enough ammunition for each of our firearms to last us for uh, well, several months of the entire zombie population of Portland coming and knocking on our door. You know, sure, uh, sure. It's, yeah, you've, you've got to do what you got to do, you know. At the same time, I am prepared for, you know, if something does happen, uh, you know, and we have a natural disaster, or, you know, the not zombies do knock down my door, I'm, I'm going to be able to hit the road uh, and take off either on foot or, you know, wheeled. Uh, well, you were, you, you were just know. telling me prior to the show that you're you're more on the west side by, by Beaverton, so I'm assuming you're over on Sunset Highway, right? You're right by there? Yep, I'm, I'm looking at traffic going by on Sunset Highway right now. Yeah, and so, I don't envy that traffic. I, I've been in that before. It's definitely I hate crazy. That with a passion. So, well, <laughs> let's just say, okay, because given that, for those of you out there who don't know, that freeway runs into Portland, but it also goes all the way down the ninety miles to the coast. Correct. So you're able to get there that way, but you know, so like you would probably end up heading down that way towards the coast, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that that's that's one of the first things that I've ever thought about because you know to turn around and go to the east, you're headed right down into the center of uh, downtown Portland. Uh, as anybody that knows anything about zombies knows, uh, you stay the hell out of the big cities. So that's exactly. the last direction I'm going to head. You know, uh, it would definitely be a westbound, uh, you know, uh, trip, uh, heading for the coast. You know, the whole idea of having the, the water at your back is a good idea. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of places over there that, uh, you can go to, uh, there's a very large national guard, uh, training center, uh, on the West, on, on the coast of Oregon, uh, that I guarantee, uh, you know, unless it's already been emptied out by the time I'd be getting there, I wouldn't have a whole lot of competition for unloading some of the stuff that they've probably got on hand, you know. Well, yeah, if, um, if you have enough supplies to last you for, you know, 
uh, six months, you probably wouldn't need to worry about it unless you had to bug out quick due to something else happening. Exactly. But I guess I, I'm curious for me, since I, you know, I know the area, would you would you pop down into Tillamook, you know, maybe have like a nice afternoon at the Cheese Factory before heading off to uh, – or would you uh, head up, you know, head up north? I think it's Seaside, right? Is it pop right into yep. Seaside? At the split. Yeah, Seaside is directly west from us, you know, at the coast. So I'd probably head that direction uh, and move my way up north towards uh, Astoria. Uh, you know, it's kind of funny because a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about here is uh, very similar to you know the things that I wrote in my first book. Uh, you know, sometimes you just have to put into into writing what what your plan is. Um, sure. I wound up going into a book, you know. Um, so yeah, I would definitely head towards uh, the coast. Uh, you know, head north. Uh, we've got a lot of Coast Guard up in that area, so you would have, you know, supplies from that that you'd be able to uh, get your hands on. Uh, plus, uh, on the Oregon coast, the northwest corner, there's a lot more hunters and fishermen and things along those lines. So you're going to have more ability, in my opinion, uh, to survive and forage for food than you would be if you stayed here in the city. You know, no, that's, I mean, that's very true. Plus, I mean, if all things, you know, all things considered, uh, if you had to get out, there's still that two mile bridge that crosses over from. Astoria into Washington. Exactly. So that's kind of like, I mean, it could be a dangerous trap depending on if there's cars there, but right. You know, it, it might be a way to get out if necessary. Plus, I mean, at least the Columbia feeds out right there. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of like fish and stuff and, and, you know, uh, yeah. the Oregon coast is, is, is a great way to survive too. Uh, they have so much, you know, crab and, and, and fish and everything else out there. Uh, so, yep. well, let's say if you had to like, I don't know. I like to throw out random questions in these things. So, you know, we've, we've gotten you away from the city, but obviously you're prepared enough to survive away from the city. But what if you just you had no other option but to go into Portland? How mm -hmm. would you handle that scenario? Like, I mean, you know, there was something you had to get there. It's, it, you know, something maybe at Pioneer Square, you, you know. Wow. Yeah. That, that's a rough one because I just I, I really wouldn't want to go. Um, you know, it, it would have to be a situation on that one where I would plan on going on foot, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, people, they, they can't even drive here in Portland when it's just a little bit of a rainstorm, let alone zombies. Uh, you know, so I'm not going to chance anything on the roads. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of the back roads in the town, so I'd probably do something like that. I'd, I'd probably try to stay far, far away from Highway 26, 217, I-5, you know, all the, all the main, you know, arteries here in the area yeah. and go in, you know, on, on the back roads uh, and, and find my way into there if I absolutely had to go in there. Uh, sure, you know, sure. I, I've been a, a concealed handgun license holder since 1993, and one of the things that I've, you know, really focused my training and education on is is avoidance. Uh, you know, if you can keep yourself out of an area that's going to potentially be a problem, stay the heck away. You know, so if I if I can help it, I'm not going to go downtown. But if I absolutely have to, there's more than enough back roads uh, to get you down there. Uh, that it, you know, that might be a little bit clearer than a highway would, you know, because you and I both know that a highway is going to become just, you're not going to be able to travel on it, you know, at, no, exactly. at least at exactly. any speed. Yeah. You know, um, I, I am working on uh, getting myself, uh, just a nice off-road motorcycle, uh, nothing big, nothing fancy, just an off-road motorcycle that, that way I can, you know, have something that could, you know, go onto, you know, the highway that's jam packed with cars and be able to at least maneuver around a little bit. But uh, you know, at the same time, I'm I'm 42 years old. And I still got two legs at work. I can get around town. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess my my you know what I I just had to stop for some reason because given where you're at and, and and everything, if you had to get into Portland, wouldn't a good way be going up through like by the zoo and the rose, like the 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 rose garden up there, and then cutting across actually into Portland? Because I know you can you can cut through that whole area. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Uh, the, you know, another way is uh, to take the, uh, it's, it's called Germantown Road. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that. Actually, not familiar with that. Um, it's, uh, okay, it's extremely back road. And what it does is it takes you uh, basically straight from where I live uh, over to uh, what's uh, Highway 30, uh, which is uh, 30 west and east. That would take you in through the industrial side of northwest Portland and drops you right down into downtown Portland. 
okay. you know, yeah, that's that's going to be less hit because I mean, honestly, there's there's a ton of sheep out here uh, in Portland, and they're going to follow you know everybody else, and everybody else is going to be like 26, you know, or I five north or south. You know, honestly, I, I doubt many of them are going to be like, oh, I don't want to take my Audi, you know, out on Highway 30 because it goes to the industrial area, you know. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I believe that Highway 30 would be, you know, uh, not nearly as uh, jammed up with vehicles uh, to get into downtown uh, as any of the other main roads would be. Uh, but sure. most definitely you could cut off of 26, you know, go to the zoo and then, you know, do just like the uh, the bombers do. And they ride the uh, the kids bikes down the hill from the zoo uh, in the downtown Portland. So that's the way to do it. <laughs> and I guess for, for everyone yep. who's listening, who doesn't live in Portland. And I, I know there's a lot of them. We're not like trying to like say that Portland is better than every other city. We're just really saying that it's best to know your city yep. well enough to know all the ways around the freeways and major major congested areas. Uh because it just it really helps to know, like, obviously, our knowledge of Portland would help get around all the problems if we had to go inside the city, which I wouldn't recommend. I'd say go go to the coast because uh, it's always going to be better. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, we're, we're definitely running yeah, out of time. Yeah. So I'm just going to I'm just going to kind of uh, the, the, the last question I always ask everyone on the show is what would you do if you were bit? First off, I'd shoot the sucker that bit me. Um, of course. Know, yeah, but, I think that's a given. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if I can't yeah. shoot him, uh, he, he's going down one way or another. Um, it, it would be one of those situations where you know I would ask my wife or ask whoever is with me, you know, to go ahead and put me down. Uh, you know, everybody else talks about hiding it. Um, you know, I mean, you've got that fear. You, even though you know you're going to die, you don't want to die, so you're going to hide it. Um, I've got enough presence of mind, you know, with knowing everything that I know about the zombie genre and everything like that. Uh, if I get bit and if we know that it's a, a bite's going to kill you, you know, type plague, uh, put me down. And if you can't do it, then as much as I, I won't want to do it, I'd put myself down before I got to, to that point. Um, I would not want to shamble. I would not want to hurt anybody else. So I would do what I had to do, you know. I understand that completely, but that is definitely all the time we have uh, for this week. Uh, Tony, thanks a lot for being on here. For all of you guys listening at home, be sure to check out our show notes to get the links to Tony's books. And uh, be sure to also go to kzomradio.com for more information on how to be on The Survivalist or thesurvivalist.com to catch all the other shows. Uh, and uh, Twitter and Facebook at KZOM. Hell, just go to Google, type in KZOM, The Survivalist, and you'll find us all over the place. But Tony, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me, Matt. And uh, for everyone else, we'll see you next week on The Survivalist. Have a good one. This episode of Survivalist was brought to you in part by Hope for Zombies, a community resource for all things you'll need or need to know for the upcoming apocalypse. Hope for Zombies, plan for everything at hopeforzombies.com. Thrivalist Gear, purveyors of survivalist, disaster preparedness, recreational, and homesteading equipment. They promote a ready and prepared lifestyle, so when changes do come, we as a country are prepared because our citizens are prepared. Survivalistgear.com ZombieGift.com is the premier site on the web for unique zombie gifts and collectibles. We feature the latest and greatest in zombie-themed gifts. You'd have to be brain dead to not visit us today. ZombieGift.com And finally, a special thanks goes out to Super Pulse, the band providing the music for tonight's show. If you like this kind of dirty rock and roll, please find them at superpulse.org.